Hey guys, hope you're doing well. Uh, here is our video for Commandment 8. Um, and before we jump in, couple, got some jokes for you. What do you call a cow wearing a crown? You call it Dairy Queen. What's bright orange and sounds like a parrot? A carrot does. What do you call a crazy baker? A donut. Why did what did one leaf say to the other? I'm falling for you. What did the fork say to the knife? Say, you're looking pretty sharp. How does a barber do his work so fast? He does shortcuts. Why do mummies have trouble keeping friends? They're so wrapped up in themselves. Why did the witch need a computer? She needed to do a spell check. When is the moon the heaviest? When it's full. And finally, where do bees go after they get married? They go on their honeymoon. All right, there we go. Um, make sure I don't get interrupted here for the rest of the video. So, um, boy, besides uh, number one, well, this is one, I'll just say this. This is one that I see being a big issue amongst people in their relationships with others, uh, young and old alike. In fact, sometimes I think the older we get, the worse we get at this one. And we'll talk about that as we go along. Because this has to do a whole with a whole lot more than just lying. So, you shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. We should fear and love God so that we do not tell lies about our neighbor. Betray him. Slander him. So, betray him means if somebody tells you a secret that you keep those, those secrets a secret. Uh, slander means to... Um, tell bad things about somebody in public, uh, try and ruin their reputation, um, and then, of course, hurt his reputation. Um, but defend him, speak well of him, and explain everything, everything, in the kindest way. We'll talk more as we go here. Okay, so this is a, a Shakespeare quote. Um, you can talk about this as your family. Who steals my purse steals trash. Now, what is in one's purse? But he that filches, which is another way to say steal, uh, from me my good name robs me of that which not enriches him. So if somebody takes my, bad, my good name, my reputation from me, it doesn't make another person necessarily rich, but as he finishes here and makes me poor indeed. So talk about that as a family. See if you can figure out what he's saying there. All right. Um, what's just as bad as telling lies or gossiping? Listening to them. It's as important that we don't tell lies or gossip. Um, it's as important to, if somebody tries to tell us lies or uh, gossip to us, that we stop them from doing it and point it out to them. It's tough, though. We all love some good, hot, juicy gossip, don't we? What does God forbid in the Eighth Commandment? Well, from Proverbs 19.5, a false witness will not go unpunished, and he who breathes out lies will not escape. He forbids that we tell lies, right? Falsehoods. Big ones, small ones. Sometimes we like to call them white lies, uh, as if they're small, they're not that bad, it's okay. Is it? Really? Um, also included in this, I would say, withhold the truth. Um, now, this is one has to have a little bit of a caveat, right? 
and, and the reason why I say this is there are times where we purposely withhold information that the other person has a right to hear and we do so to mislead them. So we leave out a bit of the story uh, so as to um, deceive them. However, there are other times, I'm thinking right now, uh, as I record this, we're less than a week from when we got broken into uh, in the arson, uh, that I know some information um, regarding the suspect, I guess you would call him, uh, the perpetrator. Uh, uh, truth that I am withholding, uh, but I'm doing that not only for them, um, but also for the legal process. So um, there are times, especially for people in positions of authority, um, even Jesus, um, there are times, you know, if you read through the Gospels or reading through where he says, don't tell people who I am, uh, that sometimes uh, for the good of others, right, um, that truth has to be withheld for a time. So maybe you can think of some other circumstances where that would be the case. But if we're doing it simply to deceive somebody, to get away with something, um, then that's not a good thing to do. Um, you know, I, before I go back on that one real quick, think about um, those times that we withhold the truth because we want to save somebody's feelings. Let's say uh, your friend has a big old booger how, hanging out of their nose. And to tell them you're afraid it might embarrass them, so you might not want to do that. But is that really helping them? Yeah, it might get them embarrassed a little bit, but I think they'd rather know and take care of it than to walk around the rest of the day with a booger hanging out their nose. Now, okay, let's continue. Um, for B, Proverbs, again, eleven thirteen. whoever goes about slandering reveals secrets, but he who is trustworthy in spirit keeps a thing covered. So in other words, there are some times where we have close relationships with people and we we know things that might be um, embarrassing for them uh, that nobody else knows. Um, and so we keep those, uh, again, out of good for our neighbor. It wouldn't do anybody any good maybe to hear this. And it certainly wouldn't do any good for our neighbor. Um, so it's good for us to keep those things um, between us, you would say. Um, so betray someone's secrets, right? Unless, unless why? Um, there's, there are reasons and there are times where revealing somebody's secrets is a good thing. Uh, a number of years ago, one of my daughters had a friend. She commented to us on a Saturday morning, I remember very well, that her friend had been talking about suicide. And um, my daughter wasn't really happy at the time, but I, um, in hearing this, I then reached out to this uh, friend of my daughter's father uh, to share with him what I had learned. And he called back and he was incredibly thankful for that. His family had struggled with uh, suicide and mental illness. And so uh, knowing this, he was able to uh, help his daughter. And so there are circumstances like that where um, for the well-being of somebody who shares a secret with them, we need to reveal that secret. Also, um, again, slander someone. You are revealing some information for the sole purpose of hurting them, hurting their reputation. Uh, oftentimes, you will hear ce about celebrities. Um, they will sue um, uh, uh, organizations that run stories or show pictures about them that are damaging to them and they these are slan these are lawsuits uh, claiming slander upon them uh, so sometimes you, you'll see that right the paparazzi um, okay uh, so again say something hurtful which is this is what slander is or something that's untrue either way um, something that is revealed uh, with the only consequence and goal um, of hurting another person, um, whether it's true or not true. Okay, and uh, again, the goal of damaging their reputation. Uh, 
What are some ways that we break this one? Um, boy, yeah, spend some time thinking about that. Write down some ideas. Talk about it again as a family. Um, see what other ways that you can think of that this happens. So the next question, question four, is how do we hurt ourselves when we tell lies, gossip, or betray others? Well, think about that. Do you want to be known as somebody who can't keep a friend's secrets? Do you want to be known as the gossip in school? Um, that er, that ultimately has a bad reputation for you. Um, you know, maybe your friends want to share some things that they're struggling with, but they realize that you can't keep a secret. Um, that's going to hurt your relationship with your friends if you can't do that. Um, just again, as a side note, uh, that's something that actually is a part of what I um, commit to when I became a pastor is that as I counsel people um, through very difficult situations, things that they've done and have been done to them, uh, I swore an oath to secrecy and I take that very, very seriously. Now again, there are times when things are revealed that uh, for legal purposes or for the well, well-being of somebody, I have to reveal them. Um, but those are rare, if ever, circumstances. Um, if somebody comes in and wants to confess their sin, it is my obligation to keep that secret. Um, and I do that, and I think very, and I feel very strongly about that, as I should. Okay. So what does God require of us? Well to speak well of and praise others. Think about, this is, this is the part where I see people um, all ages, but I see it a lot in adults, where, and I'm guilty of this too, where we are want to um, speak the worst of others, to assume the worst of why people do things. Um, and how much better it would go for us and for our world if we were always seeking to find opportunities to thank people, to praise them for what they've done. Think about how you feel when um, somebody speaks well of you or compliments you or congratulates you. Um, you could make somebody's day by doing this, um, and I think we need to do more of it. Again, Proverbs, we read, Open your mouth for the mute. For the uh, mute is somebody who can't talk. For the rights of all who are destitute, who are poor and broken and need help. Open your mouth. Judge righteously. Defend the rights of the poor and the needy. So defend people. Um, if you hear somebody speaking poorly of them, um, do what you can to defend them uh, and speak up for them and um, try and protect them, whether it's your friend or not. Uh, Ephesians, Paul writes, let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits this occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. So what does that mean? We should always put the best construction on people and events. Um... So, uh, I'll give, you know, our situation here at church with the young men that broke in. Um, I think for a lot of people, and I'll include myself here, I assumed the worst when I heard of it. That he uh, was just a, a mean person, that he was doing drugs and alcohol, and that's why this happened. Um, that might not be the case. We don't always know. Uh, let's say your friend, you see your friend in the morning at school, and you can tell they're upset and they're angry and they're very short with you. They don't talk much with you. Um, maybe you are one to think, well, gosh, what did I do to them? What's their problem? 
Um, maybe you could rather think, gosh, I wonder what happened. Is there something wrong? Is there something I can do to help? Um, and, and, you know, there's a different way of looking at all of these different things. Everything we see from a distance, every time somebody says or does something, we have a choice to make in how we take it. Are we going to take it in the best possible way? Or are we going to just jump to the worst possible reason? Um, so Matthew, uh, Jesus says in Matthew 18, 15, he says that there, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. We'll talk about that as a family. How does that connect with this um, this commandment here of not telling lies and speaking truth? Um how does this command? How does this? Uh, these words of Jesus apply to that commandment. Uh, seven uh, from James. If we put bits into our into the mouths of horses, right? Those are those metal pieces, uh, so that they obey us. We guide their whole bodies as well. Look at the ships also. Though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are guided by a very small rudder wherever. The will of the pilot directs them. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire, and the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. Uh, continuing on, for every kind of beast and bird of reptile and sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. Those are powerful words. And so the question then is, is what is so powerful, right? This little muscle in our mouth can cause so much damage, can, can destroy relationships between siblings and parents and children. Um, it can draw, destroy people's lives. Um, it's, it's amazing how much damage can be done by our words, right? Now, if you've heard the old saying, it's so wrong and untrue. Uh, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's just the opposite, isn't it? Um, the wounds that are caused by the hurtful things people say, um, can last, unfortunately, a lifetime. And, and, you know, just on the opposite, like James was saying, or the writer of James was saying, um, that at the same point, we can, we can bring so much good and joy to people's lives by things we say. So then the next question is, is so the Spirit of God is involved in this process, right? The Holy Spirit. And how does he show our work? How can he work through our words, through our speech? Um, how can we bless others, right? And we've talked about... Not only saying good things about them and, and complimenting them, but even, gosh, even greater is using our tongues uh, and our words to share the love of Jesus Christ, right? Uh, uh, in the um, book Romans, we're told that uh, people come to faith by hearing the good news of Jesus Christ. And that's not just pastor. That's all of us. All right. Uh, that's it. A little bit shorter this time. Uh, again, this is for, uh, obviously, Commandment 8 that we will look at uh, on the first Advent midweek uh, schedule of December 1st. See you then.